So one city in Minnesota, key route on the Minneapolis St. Paul to Duluth run and two charge port operators vying for the first activation of a high power DC fast charger. Which one made it? Let's jump in, take a look. Welcome back to Plug and Play EV. I'm Steve, and in this one, we'll be looking at the tricky business of getting a DC fast charging station up and operational. Seems harder than it should be, but there's a lot of moving parts there. And when you get those stations in the ground, uh, how long does it take to activate? You may have caught a really quick short we did on the way up to Voyagers National Park in July, where we noticed a six stall Electrify America station going in there, which would be really useful on that route. But not long after that, the uh, Circle K station station just across the road by the looks of it came onto the plug share map and both of these were kind of units in the ground and vying to go live so let's take a look at which one made it in the circle k versus electrify america race to activate fast charging be honest you already know who won don't you So a tale of two DCFC activations, but uh, here's a little more context before we get into the activation and who made it first. Um, so it's on I-35. This is a route between uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul and Duluth, Minnesota. So this is something that people go up there to hit the North Shore, which is just beyond Duluth. We kind of know this route now because we've just been up there for the summer on our way up to Voyagers National Park. I have been editing the video for that. It'll be a big road trip video up soon. So this is kind of a filler, but it seemed like a good one to look at. So Pine City is uh, just between the two, as I say, Duluth and Minneapolis-St. Paul. It's about 90 miles south of Duluth, which is on the lake there, and 70 miles north of Minneapolis-St. Paul. So a nice location in the middle. And what we found going up that way was that everything above there is now 50 kilowatts. So you're getting those regional providers, mostly Zeph Energy, and they have uh, 50 kilowatt stations more often than not. There's not a whole lot of fast charging in the modern sense of the word. You've certainly got the old 50 kilowatt uh, locations, but everything else is kind of waiting for this triple digit fast charging that cities and areas on the coast have. So Pine City itself does have an existing fast charge station, a solo 50 kilowatt that uh, obviously, you know, does just fine for um, cars up to that certain point. We're looking at more people needing multiple stalls, triple digit fast charging, all the things that we're starting to get into with modern EVs. Now, to its credit, it has a Chadamo, so you're still going to have that serving the Nissan Leaf, Mitsubishi Outlander, PHEV crowd, that kind of thing. But it's strange pricing. It has a $5 connection fee, and then it's 30 cents a minute, as far as I can tell from the app. So that's pricey. You know, it's got the worst of both worlds, really. So that brings us to these two new sites and why they are so crucial on the route up to Duluth and the North Shore or back down to Minneapolis, St. Paul and southern Minnesota. So the two sites themselves, the new contenders for this uh, DC fast charging crown on that route, or the first to bridge it with triple digit fast charging at least, the Electrify America, nice new looking site, uh, six stalls instead of the usual four that had been the kind of previous standard. We're starting to see six be the more likely uh, install level that uh, is going to go on some of these routes now thank from Electrify America, so that's a solid sign. Uh, all up to 350 kilowatts in that kind of balanced charge sense and in general using that fourth generation hardware we're hoping that's going to be more reliable it seems to have been so so far at least on our routes across uh, New York State and the areas where that stuff has been installed that we visited through on uh, just after July 4th they had workers on the ground the units were in and not long after that it looked all painted up and ready to go so July ticks through August ticks through and uh, we're now in September here and uh, that one is not yet activated unfortunately so you have people on plug share obviously wondering when that's going to be the case and uh, how long it's going to take to get up it's not unusual we are used to seeing sites painted up hardware in the ground and seemingly ready to go but they have to have the local utility uh, hook them up or there's some bureaucratic piece that uh, we're waiting for however in this case we had a new one a new dc fast charging station pop up on the uh, map not at all far from the Electrify America site. You'll see from the screen how that looks and some of the stuff that was around it, amenities, it's right off the interstate. So moving on to the Circle K site, which is at our holiday station stores, 
if anything, uh, even better than a place to land the Electrify America site, although they really are less than half a mile apart just across the road. The Holiday Station stores is a gas station, convenience store, very easy to get off and get on. Um, that has a much less, uh, much smaller timeline. In terms of getting on the map, uh, when we drove by, the reason we stopped in Pine City at all was because there was that uh, coming soon pin in Plugshare for the Electrify America site. So we stopped and took a look. Now, I don't recall exactly but I'm pretty sure that if there had been another pin there, unless I filtered it out somehow, I'm pretty sure at that time around July 4th, 5th, that there was nothing on Plugshare about this uh, Circle K charging site at the Holiday Station stores. And in checking Plugshare, that seems to back that up. It seems to have been added around the end of July, around the 30th. And then according to the photos, there seemed to be hardware on site somewhere between that uh, early August to mid August timeframe. So that puts the installation of the uh, dispenser themselves in there somewhere in the middle to late uh, part of August and now we're in September uh, last week that uh, site has gone live so you can see that speedy turnaround you know with the, the fact that it wasn't on plug share means we don't know how long there was permitting and all the pieces that come before but you know that really it almost doesn't matter if you compare the two we were on site at the evergreen electrify America on the July 5th when those dispensers were going in the ground and it seems to be you know a few days after that they were looking painted up come through to the start of September here still nothing we're moving to the middle of September not entirely sure when that one's going to activate so you've got at least two months hardware in the ground ready to go and uh, no activation so what are the differences here what can we pull from this and uh, some of the wider takeaways about station activation So I wouldn't normally get into all this stuff of a, a developing site because it's just something we don't know by individual area in places like California where the permitting process is a lot more complicated and there's more bureaucracy. Uh, but in this case, you've got a unique little case study where there's not a whole lot of DC fast charging in the area. It's clearly going to be the first kind of site of its kind with power being suitable, triple digits, multiple stalls, all the kind of things that we're looking for in a modern charging site. So getting something activated here is, is a big boon to the area and a big boon to that route itself. And you've got the same county and the same processes and administrative groups that the teams around these site, two sites had to go through to get the sites permitted, groundwork done, dispensers in, and then final checks and lit up. So clearly Circle K has turned that around very quickly. So that's to their credit. The only real differences we can see here are the stall count. Circle K has uh, four technically with two dispensers and simultaneous charging on each of them. And the Electrify America has six stalls and obviously more power going through potentially with up to 350 kilowatts and the Circle K site being up to 180 kilowatts. Further differences, obviously the partners, that the Electrify America is a retail center, has multiple different restaurants and the Walmart across the street to a few other providers so there could be some potential there to uh, need other sign-offs. Um, there is the convenience store aspect and the uh, maybe single entity of the Circle K site and then the uh, power level being less. So there are a few different uh, moving parts there, but it does just come down to that kind of fact that it, uh, there's a feeling that Electrify America is slow to move, slow to react, and that these some of these new upstart kind of uh, networks, Circle K obviously being a massive brand, but the network itself being in its infancy, maybe they move a bit faster. Maybe there's a little more urgency on those teams to get these things in the ground. But it's just interesting to see from an outside view, you know, the differences in the sites, how they turn around and uh, people's reaction and this is going to generate a lot of goodwill towards Circle K and not necessarily diminish Electrify America because the people will be glad that that site now has all of these fast charging stalls at any given moment but on the pure turnaround time alone Circle K has definitely done the job here. The Circle K site obviously has up to 180 kilowatts, but it is shared power. So if you're with somebody else who is uh, using the same machine as you, then you're going to be sharing it and it's down to uh, an even split as long as the cars can both pull that much power of uh, 90 kilowatts. So at that point, still fast charging, you're still going to get a very good charge and probably be on your way in 30 to 40 minutes. But it is one of those where you can see then that if you're looking at both of them and saying, well, my car can do as the Ionic can say, 230 
130 to 140 kilowatts. The other one's going to max out at 180. If I pull 180 flat for uh, 20 minutes, I'm just as happy, to be honest, as if I plug into a Electrify America and get the full whack. It really makes very little difference in terms of time, maybe a couple of minutes. But you are risking someone else plugging in at the same time and then being pulled down to 90. That starts to accumulate more and more time. So maybe the Electrify America is the better option there. But then you also get the same kind of thing that uh, we've had problems over there. As you'll see on the road trip video, whenever I manage to actually get that out, uh, it is um, a phenomenon that kind of starts around the Indiana area where we might travel across from Boston, that the more and more sites are derated, it doesn't seem to perform quite as well. And while we have had some really good performance in the New York Thruway kind of route from these new Electrify America stations, um, that's not guaranteed. There is potential for them to lower power or a lot of cars to be using them at the same time. And then we'll see how that balance charging works out in real life and what kind of power people get in actuality on these busy travel days. Then in terms of pricing, we've got uh, Electrify America's new pricing at 48 cents per kilowatt hour. You can get on the Pass Plus plan for $7 a month, which if the 25% savings hold true, will bring you down to 36 cents per kilowatt hour, which is pretty reasonable, but obviously you gotta weigh up how much uh, that membership pays for itself and how long it takes to do that. Over at the Circle K, it looks like uh, it's free at the moment. So if you get a chance, go over. If you're in the area, you'll get a free charge through to 21st of September 2023. After that, it should go in line with the pricing of their 180 kilowatt stations across other locations, which is 45 cents per kilowatt hour. So pretty much in line with what we're seeing, not entirely different from most of the providers, and actually probably a much better deal than the stuff that was in the area before, just because of those ridiculous $5 session fees and 30 cents per minute time-based billing. So this uh, site, you know, assuming the Electrify America one gets up and running very soon, now has gone from one single 50 kilowatt station to uh, potentially 10 stalls serving um, DC fast charging around the triple digits, which is obviously an important transformation why we're looking at this site so closely. But it is interesting to see the turnaround times and it is something that we'll focus on more and more to see how long it takes for these things to uh, get in the ground and then opened up. So both of these, the Circle K and the Electrify America, now only have CCS charging there. So you're not going to be able to use uh, these locations in a Leaf, Mitsubishi Outlander, PHEV, all the kind of previous Chatamo vehicles. We'll still have that Zef Energy site in the center of Pine City there. But in this case, you know, with the landscape the way it is, we've had only CCS installed. So it does show that kind of moving on. We'll get a bunch of these that are now going to be activated with CCS only or moving even further forward, CCS and the J3400 standard when that becomes the same. So an interesting case study in DC fast charging station turnaround and uh, how long it takes to activate or how long we thought it takes versus how quickly you can actually make it happen seemingly if you really want to get that stuff lit up. Uh, let us know down in the comments. Are you local? Have you tried the Circle K station and uh, very impressed with its turnaround? Do you think that that's just a slightly less complicated station? So maybe there's more going on at the Electrify America site than meets the eye. And, uh, what are you seeing in your area? How quickly are these stations once they get the dispensers in the ground being turned around from painted a uh, lot but deactivated to lit up and ready for use by the public let us know down in the comments thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one cheers